Hi, Max again from ShopSolarKits.com. This video here, we're gonna unbox, get into the specs, the pros and cons, hooking up solar panels, everything to do with the EcoFlow Delta. Um, yeah, it's definitely our, I, I would say, I think it's our best selling solar generator. People love it. There are many pros, a few cons. We're gonna get into everything here. Um, and yeah, welcome to the video. First, um, in interest of transparency, we've opened this up, we've been playing with it and testing it for quite a while. Um, so I've just repackaged it here, but you can get a good idea. It actually comes packaged very well in the corner, in all four corners, you have very, very tight styrofoam. Toss these off. Then I'm gonna pull this out here. Move this box over. It has a hazmat label and everything on the box so if you need to return it I would suggest keeping this box because we're just gonna ask you to put it back in the box and we'll send you a return shipping label the box here has some has some warnings on it. it's a very slick box as well you open it up and under normal circumstances had I not already opened it there'd be uh, the user manual right here with your warranty card uh, I've taken that out because as I say I've already used it some styrofoam that packages this unit very tight here's the generator itself you're, you're gonna come with a carrying case for the unit um, very nice if you don't want to get dust or dirt or sand if you're traveling with this and then the accessories that come with the unit as well in the one box here you have your AC wall charger you plug this into the wall um, and then the other side goes right in here and that's how you charge with the wall in the other box here what you comes with a couple of a couple cords here this is a cigarette lighter for, charger for your car so you can be driving anywhere while you're on route camping or something and be charging this up with just the 12 volt from your car and then the mc4 adapter um, this will allow you to charge with any type of solar panels as long as they're MC4. So if you already have your own solar panels, you can use this adapter cord to charge it. It's about 11 feet long, so it gives you a good distance from plugging this into your generator and then into your panels. We also sell extension cord if you want more than that. Uh, quick guide, instructions, user manual, all those kind of things. And that's essentially what comes with your unit, uh, and this is what it looks like on the front here power it on um, batteries you're not allowed to ship at hundred percent so it's gonna come I around 50% charged or if not less um, and that's completely standard um, you can see a very informative screen you've got four quick charging USB a and two USB C ports here on the front let me get this out of the way if I turn it around here so the, all on the front here with the screen these are the DC, this is the DC side of the unit, direct current power. If I turn it around here, this is AC. There's actually six of your standard household plugs. And right in the middle here are, uh, if you have the three prong outlet, something like this, like this. This is for my fan, for example. You plug it in from the bottom and it goes in like that. And if you wanted to plug it in on the top, you just turn it around and plug it in like that. That is the, oh, and then the last thing here is the inputs of the unit. When you flip this up here, you have um, the XT60 adapter. So this is where you will plug in the solar panel cable that has come with it. This is where you plug in the AC wall charger right beside it. And then if you hit the over voltage, or um, let's say you, pu you put in more than 400 watts, more than 65 volts, it'll, um, it'll like short out you just click this button that'll reset it and you're back to being able to use it and recharge it again okay, so we've now unboxed it we've had a quick look at all the ports how to get solar into it how to take the power that's stored out of it um, and now I'm gonna actually talk a little bit about what's inside the unit itself and what makes it so unique and so cool um, so it, it has one of the it, other than yeah it has pretty much the biggest inverter for a generator this size on the market there's nothing else like it it's extremely unique it has an 1800 watt inverter um, with a 3300 watt surge 
So what that means is when, um, when electronic units are turning on, they have a very initial spike of, so if they actually only use 1,000 watts, when you turn it on, it might spike up to 2,000 watts. So your inverter needs to be able to handle that initial surge, and this has a surge of 3,300 watts. So you can, you can power an induction cooktop, no problem. Uh, later on in the video, we'll turn on a kettle, like a coffee grinder, a fan. You'll just see the standard things that it can power. I've actually seen a video, um, I believe it was uh, Jehu Garcia, of him doing a spot welder with this thing. So it, is, it, it packs a serious punch, which is extremely unique. Um, the battery life is marketed at, at uh, 1300 watt hours. It's kind of rounding up. It actually in reality is about 1260 watt hours um, of batteries in, uh, of battery in here. In terms of what's inside of it here, so you can, the, the charge control here is an MPPT. You can get 400 watts of solar panels and solar into this unit. Um, I'll, we'll show you later on in the video as well, connecting panels directly into this. Um, but 400 watts of solar can go into it to charge this up. Um, yeah, another actually extremely unique thing about this is its quick AC recharge time. Most uh, wall chargers you'll see will have a big brick. If you see your laptop or anything like that, it has a, it has a brick which actually converts the AC power from the wall into DC, which goes into the battery. It has, this is extreme, extremely unique because it, hasn't, it doesn't have that brick, as you can see. You can plug this into the unit and into the wall, and you get actually 1,200 watts. It can charge up to 1,200 watts into this. And that, yeah, that is, a, again, a brief overview of the specs, what's inside of it, the inverter, the battery size, and the charge controller. Um, now that we've unboxed the unit, looked at uh, the unit on the outside, gone inside with some of the specs, uh, I'm going to touch on some of the main pros and cons that we that we think and a lot of our customers have voiced as well. I'll start with the cons. Um, first one ascent being the fan. Uh, this one is one of the louder solar generators on the market. Um, it's super powerful, so it needs a bigger fan. Again, this is way quieter than a gas or diesel generator. Most people won't really notice it, um, but it has a louder fan than usual. Um, you'll see that during some of the testing, the fan does kick on right away to keep it nice and cool so that nothing overheats, um, but the fan has been an issue for some people for sure. Um, the uh, outlets here as well, um, there are six outlets, but if you, ha you can't get six um, appliances that have the three prongs on it because once that goes in there, now there's no room for another person to put a, another three-prong appliance in there. So it's, that's actually great that it has three. Uh, it just doesn't have six, which could be an issue. Um, and then the life cycles, because this can power up and decrease power so fast, you can use so much power so quickly, uh, it's at an estimated 800 life cycles. Um, you can choose to see this a little bit as a pro or a con. They're allowing you to use all the power in here and the full power of the inverter that can come at the expense of a little bit lower life cycles um, so if you are using this sparingly you're still going to get you know over a thousand life cycles or so but a lot of units opt to kind of regulate the output of their generator so that it can increase the life cycles ecoflow has kind of left that in your hands you're able to use the full 1800 and you can power way bigger appliances than you could with other generators um, but you can kind of it can be a con i guess if you are using this all day every day you're going to run through your 800 to a thousand life cycles quicker um, than something like an ev240 uh, that'll get you 2500 plus um, but yeah those i guess are would be the three main gripes that people have with the ecoflow would be the fan potential issue there with the life cycles um, and then the, the uh, AC plugs. Um, a lot of the pros though, so touching back on life cycles, because they're allowing you to use the full power in the inverter, you can see that as a pro. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, you can do some spot welding with this, which is unbelievable. You can run any of the appliances in your house for the most part, small air conditioners, um, coffee makers, kettles, induction cooktops, uh, because it has a massive inverter and will allow you to do all that. Um, the battery, it could be a little bit bigger, I guess, but because it's, it's, it's just about the size of a, it's a little bit bigger actually than a Lion UT1300 um, in here already. Um, and because it has 
a, a nice size battery um, and it's not too big, it's still quite portable. Um, this you can legitimately consider a portable solar generator. Something like the EB240, while it has way more battery, it's also way heavier, it's 50 pounds. Uh, this is just over 30, so it still is quite portable which and lightweight, which um, I do consider a positive actually. Like you can, you can legitimately bring this camping, you can bring, my grandma would be able to bring this out of the basement if she needed it, which I do like, um, making it quite portable. Um, yes, another thing, it comes with uh, already included in your kit, it's gonna come with the car charger, so it's not an addition that you need to buy. The fact that you can charge it with the car is really cool as well. While you're driving, it comes with the, the 12 volt charger and it comes with the MC4 adapter into it. So it's nice that you don't need to be stuck in EcoFlow's ecosystem. Um, you can you can use MC4 panels if you already have some solar panels from a previous project or you've just been interested in solar you already have some MC4 panels it can, you can use that with this generator as long as you're not exceeding the wattage or the voltage um, it's going to be no issue the cable is also I believe it's 11 feet long or so 10 or 11 feet long so it really gives you a generous cord in there and you're going to be able to use the solar panels you already have with it which is great um, I guess another another pro, um, oh, well I have it here and I forgot to mention, the 12 volt port here for your fridges, your, uh, your DC fridges, that is a regulated port. Um, really it's essential to have, it should be industry standard at this point. Um, so all the van lifers or anybody, if you're using DC appliances, you won't have an issue because this is regulated. Um, I guess one, another pro here is that this, you know, industry standard for warranties for these is one year. Uh, it does have a two year warranty on the unit. Um, so yeah, I mean, all in all, I think the pros outweigh the cons. I think the majority of customers agree, which is why I think this is our best selling generator um, right now and, and people like it so much. Another thing people wanna know is if you're charging this unit, can I use it at the same time? Yes, uh, all the solar generators we, we sell, they have pass through charging. So you're able to be plugging this in or charging it with the sun and using it at the same time. That's great. You can, you know, if you're using uh, your fan, some lights, charging your phone and your laptop, that might be 100 watts at most. And if you are inputting 300, 200, 400 watts into this, you'll be gaining battery over the day while you're using it as well. So you can do both of those at once, which is very important. Okay, so we're gonna do some load testing now. We're gonna just plug in various household appliances like a kettle here, coffee grinder, fan, some LED lights, a laptop. Um, we're gonna show you how to turn it on, how to turn on both sides of the unit and just give you the standby consumption for some various household appliances so people can kind of see all that kind of stuff. So here's the front of the unit. Um, there's a power button on the bottom here. You will click that. The unit is now on. Some various information is on the screen here. The percentage of battery left. Um, this is where you'll start seeing the wattage that's being drawn. Um, now, if I wanna use the USB ports on the front, this is the DC power side of the, of the generator. This little button here, you will click that. The white light gets illuminated. And now I know that my DC things are on. So for example, if I wanna charge this cell phone, I can plug that in. You'll instantly see four watts, four watts, five watts, six watts, generally around five or six watts for a standard smartphone to be plugged in and charging. If I shut off this button here, power goes off and we're no longer charging. Same thing, if I turn this around, it has the exact same white button here, which I'll click, turn on, the fan kicks on because with AC power, the inverter is now going um, and generally your bigger, um, the bigger units are being charged. So the fan automatically kicks on uh, once the AC has been turned on. So I'll shut this off quickly, turn it around. We'll turn back on the DC. Fans have kicked off now. You can hear there's no more fans going because we're on DC. So to give you an example here, here are some uh, LED lights, some chainable LED lights from Lion Energy. We love these, they're very, very low power draw um, uh, and very lightweight. So I'm just going to plug these in here and to give you an idea of what some LED lights might, might uh, take for water. So you turn that on, there's two watt draw for one bulb, turn that on four, turn that on seven. 
about seven watts to run these three chainable LED lights here. Plug in smartphone, we're up to 10, 9, 11 watts. So honestly, you could charge your cell phone so many times, run these lights, um, and you're only, you're only getting 10 watts here. And this has a 1300 watt hour battery, so it's nothing. I will, un I will shut off the DC side. These lights all get turned off. There's no more DC power. Unplug this. You still have a view of the screen. Now we're gonna use something that's extremely high power draw, this kettle here. It's got some water in it, so it's ready to go. I'm gonna turn on the AC side at the back. You can hear the fans kick on again. It's getting ready to use some power. I'll plug this in and let's see what the wattage draw for this kettle is. If I turn that on, 14, 1450, the fans are kicking on a little bit more, 1450. So you need at least a solar generator with 1500 watt inverter to run a, this kettle, for example, but some kettles are a little bit more efficient, but this is a very standard uh, amount that you'll need to draw. So that you can see it's kicking on. I'll shut this off, unplug this. Wattage draws down. I'm gonna now plug in the coffee grinder. You can see the fans cool down now again. It was getting ready to pump out 1400, almost 1500 watts, so the fan kicked into overdrive a bit. I'm now gonna plug in the coffee grinder and let me turn this on. This has a terrible sound, so bear with me. 100, about 130 watts to run a coffee grinder. Let's plug in this large stand-up fan. We'll plug this into the back. It has the three. So this is how you plug in the three, right just like that. I'm going to turn this over and I'll put it on its max fan setting. It's 53 watts, 51 watts, just about 50 watts for the highest setting. If I turn that down one, it drops to 40. If I turn it down to the lowest one, looking at about 34, 35 watts. So fans take very little wattage to run. That's another classic one. I'm going to plug in a laptop now, just a MacBook Air into the back here of the AC. Plug in the laptop. It's a little finicky, let's see. 18, 20, 23, 30, 25, 24. Generally laptops are around 30 watts or so to charge, so that's fairly standard. But yeah, I've unplugged this now. I'm gonna shut off the AC. And there's some standard things, household equipment, how much they draw how you turn it on. You can see I've turned off the AC stuff now, fans kick back off. All right, so to wrap this up, we highly recommend this for people who want some, who need something to power larger loads. If that's a portable AC unit, coffee, microwave, kettle, larger power tools, anything like that, um, this is gonna do you really well. Super light, super portable, and super powerful. Really can't say enough good stuff about it.